Architects never fail to amaze. A project can be crafted over years of slow refinement or equally something wonderful can appear in a heartbeat. This modest scale prefabricated house is of the latter variety. It was designed in ours, built in three days and has been home to architect Jan Bentham and his family for over 25 years. The house has an interesting genesis. In the late 1970s, the Dutch authorities, driven by a need to address an ongoing housing shortage, began to question the notion of what building types best served society. The chance to experiment came when planning a new town, Almere, east of Amsterdam, where five residential neighbourhoods were to be surrounded by green space and connected by waterways. An architectural competition was devised with the challenge to design a house that could be easily assembled by the owner and could in time be dismantled and relocated, leaving no mark on the land. Jan Bentham of Bentham Crowell Architecton was one of the winning architects. Here he talks about the project, what he learned and how it shaped. So I wanted to ask you, you know, this was your first um, building as a partnership and you weren't long out of university. You were a very young man when you, you did this building. And did you, um, did you sort of um, apply the technical and aesthetic lessons you'd learnt in university or was it a... a, a <laughs> no, completely not. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, I indeed, I, I just had finished my study. Uh, uh, it was a very difficult time for architects then. There was a crisis, like there is now in the Netherlands uh, in the building industry. Uh, it has been for a couple of years, but it was a very hard time in the beginning of the 80s also. So there was no work for architects and the only thing you could do uh, as a finished architect was start your own practice because there was no uh, work else. And starting your own practice is of course very difficult, you have to find work, so you have to uh, yeah, uh, do competitions or, or go to people. But, and, and, and we had some uh, small uh, uh, building work for uh, family related clients like new kitchens and bathrooms and uh, studies for extensions for houses but um, as we had I had studied for nine years on the university and uh, because I, I never worked on an architectural office I was dropped uh, in the architectural practice and um, I experienced that uh, although I had studied for nine years <laughs> I had learned nothing <laughs> of, of nothing, completely nothing of the, the reality of, of building. Uh, I didn't <laughs> even know how big a brick was. Uh, and, and every building in the Netherlands is built by bricks. And uh, I, I didn't know nothing about uh, uh, building costs and how to deal with contractors. And uh, so everything we started, every project we started uh, became a disaster mm -hmm. or financially or technically or because we didn't know how to to learn and, and we were very eager to to get some experience and and this project uh, which was uh, a competition also for this house uh, seemed uh, one of the possibilities to get uh, that experience of of yeah uh, of building because it was a, a kind of hands-on project that you have to develop and build yourself and uh, that was mainly the purpose why we entered this competition, um, yeah, to uh, be able uh, to learn the practice of building, uh, of, of, of real life, the real life of an architect. Uh, in, 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 and, uh, and it wasn't well, to bricks that project. you turned for this, you know, it's full of innovative ideas and innovative materials. Was that kind of exciting yeah. to be able, because you were doing a competition, you were free to express yourself? Well, uh, I didn't think about it uh, in that way, but during my nine year study, of course, I, I, I did other, other things also. And one of the things I did I lost a couple of years by rebuilding cars and motorcycles and and working much more like an, a, a real life engineer than an architect. So, and I, I studied architecture on the Delft Technical uh, University, which is basically uh, producing engineers and not uh, uh, artist, uh, artists. And uh, so I, I, I think I was, and, and in my mind, I was much more an engineer than uh, an architect. And uh, 
uh, as I had uh, my education was as an architect, but um, I myself was an engineer, and that was a, a bit of the of my problems also in, mm. in starting a practice. What am I, and, and uh, uh, how do I? Uh, how do I build? And uh, with this project, I, uh, because we had a, a number of failures uh, after another uh, in the real building industry, I, I, I thought I do it not as an architect as I am trained at the university. And, and that's interesting, it isn't it? Because engineer. then the, the success and, uh, comes from and, yeah, almost yeah. Um, letting go yeah. of what you'd learnt and just expressing it in a more engineering sense. But yet the beauty yes. of it comes out of those engineering yeah. moments like the, the, the um, space form that it sits on and so forth. Yeah, and because it's a logic and uh, and uh, it's a it's a logic building. It's completely clear. Uh, well, I think uh, in every detail, it, it's uh, you you see the idea behind uh, the project and behind the, the, the. And it was also about minimizing cost, wasn't it? And, and minimizing yeah. materials and and keeping there was an economy about it that was quite yeah. appealing. It was an, uh, yeah. That was. Uh, well, in this competition, uh, where everybody could join in, you, don't, you didn't have to be an architect or an engineer. Uh, everybody could design his own uh, house. Uh, and um, uh, the, the, the prize you could win uh, was uh, the, the, the use of a, a, a nice piece of, of, of a nice site in uh, the new reclaimed uh, polder or the, the city of Almere. And you had to, uh, but and you you could build your your own house there. You had to pay for it yourself uh, on that site, but you had to leave the site after five years, and that meant that uh, whatever house you were uh, going to uh, design, it had to be simple or it had to be uh, not too expensive and uh, preferable reusable after that period of five years. Because if you have to build a house and you have to demolish it after five years, uh, well, you you. You have, of course, a very difficult time and a big loss, and because building is not a very quick industry. So that was basically the brief for uh, that project: build a house that is simple, that is cheap, uh, that can be uh, built in a in a very short time. Because, well, if you can only use the, the site for five years, you don't want to be building for three years and then uh, have two years left. And, uh, and uh, uh, design a house that that uh, uh, can be rebuilt or uh, relocated after that period of five years. That and really and then was you the use this, the um, you know, construction material that was sort of used in refrigeration trucks. You know, so so it was very light and strong. Yeah. Um, was, so that was your solution to this um, cheap and mobile and effective. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the, there was a, 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 a series of problems, not only the time, uh, uh, the financial problem, but also the, the, uh, the technical problem that housing in the Netherlands is always on concrete piling because the, the soil is not uh, 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 very steady and uh, uh, you couldn't just use that material, uh, that uh, construction technique also because you had to remove those concrete uh, piles if you were to leave the site after five years. So uh, you had to find a solution for all of those uh, problems. And uh, one of the solutions here was uh, you had to build not only a simple house, but to build a, a very light house so that you had the least problems uh, with, the, uh, with, with the instable soil. Uh, and, and to build a, a construction that is very strong and at the same time flexible uh, uh, in the same time. And uh, in the end, if you combine all those restrictions for the projects, uh, uh, my solution was to try to reduce uh, the house and, the, and, and every single component of the house to the, 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 to the, yeah, the, the simplest and the most logical uh, technical solution. And, uh, try to leave out uh, everything you didn't need uh, in an extreme, uh, well, in an extreme uh, way in the end. But then um, you moved in with your, your family. Was there just you and your wife when you first moved in? No, uh, uh, we lived in, the, in another suburb of Amsterdam in a, in a high rise, uh, very small house in a high rise complex. And uh, we didn't, when I was building the house, I didn't even think about living there. It was not in my mind. In my mind was building. I want to build this project. It has to be there. 
But the moment it was finished, yeah, I had to uh, uh, find uh, uh, something to do with the house and not uh, <laughs> leave it vacant. And uh, at, at, at one uh, weekend we thought, why not go live there ourselves? Uh, up to then, I thought it, it is too extreme and it's, it, it, it would, it, it, well, it's, it's an idea, but it wouldn't be a real uh, livable house because it's too extreme. But uh, in the end, I thought, uh, uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. I, I design a house as an architect <laughs> and I don't want to, yeah, and I think it's too extreme. And, and uh, of course, it's not extreme. Why not try to live there uh, ourselves? And we decided that uh, in a very short time, in a weekend, and uh, one month later, we uh, we uh, removed to, to the new house. Uh, I, my wife, and uh, a two years old uh, son. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think we had two cats then, yeah. Two cats. And, and, yeah. Was it, and was it challenging to live in at first? Like, did you have to adapt to new ways? No, we, we enjoyed things? it from the very first day, from the very first uh, night that we uh, arrived in the house. Uh, it was magic. Uh, when we started living there, the, the, uh, we built the house on reclaimed land. There was only uh, a free view from from, from, from kilo, yeah, kilometers around the house. There was only reeds and, and and sand and and some water in front of the house, but there was nothing there. And uh, all the other houses were at, at the back of our house. So we, yeah, <laughs> it looked like we, we were alone on the world. <laughs> And uh, it, it was magic, and uh, well, of course, the light, the, the stars, the rain. Uh, we hadn't, we didn't even have blinds the first uh, month, so we had just the open glass walls, and uh, we uh, felt it, it felt natural from the first day. Of course, there were problems. It, 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 the house was very cold in the winter, uh, and extremely hot. Became extremely hot in in, in summer, and uh, when there was a, a wind and there was wind because well the area was completely open uh, the heart the house uh, made an, a, a terrible noise because uh, yeah the wind was not only going over the house but underneath the house also and everything shaked and and and, and uh, vibrated and uh, but you really lived in uh, in in the weather if, uh, and and that made the house uh, well, very special yes. from the first day. Yeah. And, and it does have that sense of, you know, you, you climb that external staircase, you know, a bit like, you know, going yeah. into an aircraft. And, and then can you just describe the planning, the internal planning of the, of the space? Well, well, there, there was no, yeah, the, the, the planning, the house was simple. Uh, uh, the, yeah. the, the, this was the model I made for the competition. So uh, it's a simple model that shows how simple the house is. And of course, uh, the living area, it was six by eight meters uh, and it was empty. And uh, it was logical to, yeah, to put the table and some, some uh, uh, chairs in it and uh, some uh, uh, a sofa to sit on. Uh, and uh, the rest were uh, the small uh, cabins that uh, formed the back of the house. Uh, where we had a kitchen, a, a very uh, a minimalistic uh, bathroom, and two very small uh, bedrooms, and uh, it was only uh, yeah the, the house dictated how to live there. Uh, of course, we had a small child, and uh, that got one of the bedrooms, and the other bedroom was left for my wife and, and myself, and uh, there was space for a. a, a beds only of 70 centimeters wide <laughs> so my wife and, and I had to sleep on top of each other in, in bunk beds <laughs> <laughs> in that uh, yeah uh, uh, the net space of our bedroom was two meters by 1.4 meters so uh, it, it, it was uh, the house more or less dictated how you lived in yes. it. Yes, but then yeah. you had this very generous living space um, yeah. and, and also yeah. Which was, of course, not restricted to the six by eight meters because mm. uh, the walls were completely uh, uh, glazed and uh, the whole world was our living room, you could say. That's right. And you bought some, I love the furniture that you bought over the years for the space, really interesting yeah. pieces, but, but also you couldn't really buy too, too much. Did you find the place no. dictated how you lived in it in that sense as well? You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 
I, I always uh, uh, had a, a tendency to not own too much and not have too too much things. I, of course, uh, now I'm 62 and I have too much things. <laughs> I have seven cars and uh, I, have to, I have four houses. And uh, but uh, I really still like to have a, a simple space. The house where I live now, permanently in the, in the city of Amsterdam, is a very small canal house with not too much furniture and some art on the walls and. Um, it was you, you didn't need more than uh, the daily necessities. You need a bed, you need a table, uh, some uh, some uh, chairs, and and that's all. And of course, we we, we just uh, started our practice. Uh, I didn't have much money, and mm. all the money I had was spent uh, to build the house. So. Uh, we went to uh, I I IKEA, IKEA. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was just uh, starting uh, their warehouses in Europe uh, at that time. So we were one of the first clients to build very cheap, uh, some very cheap furniture there. And I bought one or two uh, very special uh, uh, chairs, the, the wing chairs, mm -hmm. for, uh, uh, which is... Uh, I think not more of, of other clubs. I had a, a Rietveld, the red blue Rietveld uh, chair. Uh, I had it from my study time. And with two or three uh, chairs, the house was full. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, uh, yeah. And also, you didn't need much. no, yeah. but you had, yeah. but somehow the, the color, that green color you chose, kind of defines the building, doesn't it? Do you, do you feel yeah. that that was utterly the right choice? No, it, it was uh, a, a practical choice. Uh, at the moment when we uh, designed the house, we were uh, we had a, a commission from the Dutch state to uh, design a number of uh, 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 custom stations on the border of the Netherlands, between the Netherlands and, and Germany. And uh, we, uh, uh, for that uh, uh, custom stations, we, we uh, intended to use some space frames. That's why we had a space frame in this house. Uh, one of the reasons we used a space frame in this house. And we also used for the custom stations that were in a very rural, uh, uh, a natural environment. Uh, we uh, intended to use a green color because uh, they were, were in, at the same time in, in a, a very uh, lush green environment uh, as on uh, very busy motorways where everything gets very dirty. And we wanted to have a, a building that expressed uh, its purpose, uh, customs, and customs in the Netherlands wear green uniforms. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, would be a building that would fit in the landscape and uh, would still be fitting in the landscape when it uh, uh, became dirty, which it would inevitably become because it was on the motorway. And we suggested to use that, that very strong green color for those buildings. But uh, we haven't never seen a, a building or a structure in that color. And uh, we thought, no, if we are going to build this building and we were going, we won this competition. Mm. And if we are going to, to uh, build it for ourselves, why not use that green color so that we can see what a building in that color looks <laughs> it like. Looks like. Uh, but I, I was clever, clever enough in the end to use the, the green color only on the outside and not yes. on the inside. <laughs> yes, the that's true. That's, it might have been a bit uh, much, uh, but actually um, that yeah. lush. But, but it worked very yeah. well in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the environment uh, where we build the building and in the environment uh, that uh, well, the, the, the surroundings of the house later became. That's what I was because, going to yeah, say because yeah, of the yeah. lushness of the green, and we've got that picture which shows the green of the building with the green of yeah. the uh, foliage, and they're almost the same color. And it's so so you've got man-made and nature kind of working together, and it looks very beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks, at the same time, it works very well in, 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 in winter time. Oh, yes, I love that shot. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I can send you this back. But, uh, then, uh, it's beautiful. It's the only color in, in, in a very wide, wide. gray environment. And that's uh, also very spectacular. Well, you, yeah. you, you sent me that one before, and I had it as the screensaver on yeah. my computer okay. for a while because it's so beautiful. I remember that. Yeah, yes. You, you wrote it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
And um, I, I wanted to ask also, you know, that was such an experimental building. When you look, you've had a hugely successful practice doing all sorts of enormous scale projects. Do you look back on that and see the genesis of, 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 of your practice and of your ideas and that some of the things were in that very starting project? There are this project and another project that we did uh, more or less in the same time, another house uh, where we had the same experience of first designing a house that was three times the budget and uh, had to redesign it in a completely different mindset. Uh, uh, those projects uh, were essential in our practice, in, in our way of thinking as an architect and working as an architect. Uh, because this way of of, uh, of designing and, and working uh, fitted with our uh, uh, with my person and with my personal view on the work. And th this is the first time this project was the first time that I uh, that I really uh, felt yes, I am an architect. Uh, yeah, you're not I, just I, an engineer; I, yeah, you're an yeah, architect I'm, I'm not, as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm an <laughs> architect as well and yes. I never had that feel during that nine year study I never had that feeling uh, maybe only the first time I had that feeling when uh, I was studying for six years when I yes I think uh, when I visited the, the Centre Pompidou in, in, in Paris uh, uh, that's well extreme uh, beautiful building of an, of an engineer that became an architect and yeah uh, and this was the way I, I, with this mentality and with this state of mind, I can do the work of an architect and mm -hmm. I can make uh, convincing projects and projects that fit and that have a logic that uh, I can relate to. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I cannot, I'm not an artist, I cannot draw uh, a shape. Uh, I have to uh, find myself a reason why uh, uh, I use that shape. Yes. Uh, and and, and uh, if I cannot find the uh, uh, the reason I throw it away. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, I understand. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not satisfied and yes. it, it doesn't fit. Yes, yeah. yes. And just one last question. I looked on your website at the, 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 the holiday house at, is it pronounced Texel? Um, yeah, latest, yeah, one of our latest projects. Oh, it's fantastic <laughs> yeah. with the fishermen's yeah. nets on the exterior. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, another we, small... Just finished finish it this year. Yeah, yes, yeah. beautiful yeah. and clever and and small and still ha and has all the kind of ingeniousness that you're... Yeah. you're... There, is, there is some consistency in our yes, work. Yes, yeah. that's what yeah. I felt. Yeah. It had come full circle yeah. as well. So I, I really yeah. admired that one. It's very... Um, it it's fits in the landscape, but also the material reality is clever and and very emotive actually even just in the pictures you feel a connection yeah, yeah. it's a project that we we uh, more or less the same uh, uh, history we've worked on that for i think for three or four years mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was too expensive too uh, too difficult uh, uh, difficult situation uh, the landscape the history of the, of the site yes. and in the end uh, uh, yeah we found in, 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 by doing it in our way, it, yes. it worked and became a, a convincing and, and a very nice building. Well, thank you. We've, we've just got in under your half an hour. And okay, um, thank, nice. thank you so much. It was a lovely, you're very generous with your time and I loved your answers and the way you talk about it. So, so thanks again. Okay. okay. You, you take care. Bye-bye. I, I, I take care. And I you just, take care. Uh, yeah. <laughs>